Hello all. Hi everyone. How's everybody doing today? I hope you all are having a great day, an awesome day, and thanking God for everything, for who he is and what he do for you. And just, um, not just being in complaints, but thanking him for who he is and what he will be doing. What he do for others, he shall do for you. All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're newcomers to the channel, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've always been listening since I've started or now you're a listener, um, please subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Um, I always welcome positive comments, everyone, and you all have just been on fire for the Lord, and we want to thank God every day, praise God, and worship God. All right, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about um, wickedness and evil. Okay, I received a vision as uh, like a man's legs was caught up in a big uh, bird. So um, the Lord has given me, um, you know, as the as you you you're snared, the evil, you know, falleth on you suddenly, you know. So we must confess and repent and give our lives over to the Lord because God says that you can die. If you're living by the sword, you can die by the sword, everyone. So um, we must go in faith and we must reverence God and know that he is God. We're not above God. I don't care how much money you might have. I don't care, you know, how much anything you might have. We're not bigger than God, and we're not our own gods. We don't belong to ourselves, everyone. So it's about faith, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Um, Jesus says, even a fool says there's no God. So we must ask for wisdom, knowledge, and revelation of who he is to show himself to us, everyone, to come into your hearts, minds, bodies, spirit, and souls, to give your life over to him. Because he judges, God judges the wicked, everyone. So we're going to be talking about this today. This is not a happy topic, but we also know that Jesus, just like in Galatians 1-4, he talks about giving himself up for those from the present evil ways of this world, okay? So the Lord is saying that you can perish in your wickedness, all right? Um... What you are doing that's evil, you will be judged for, okay? And we don't know how long we have here. So that's why God said it's good to know the Lord, okay? So um, this is for those who are not saved, those who are running in wicked and evil things can perish by the sword, so this is going to be a um, very um, deep topic. Some might not want to um, talk about these type of things, but when God brings this to the forefront and to your spirit, you must do as he say. Let his will be done. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done because this could save someone to come out of their wickedness and evil ways. Okay. Um, thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was and is to come, we welcome your fire. We welcome your anointing in this place, Father. We welcome the blood of Christ, the living King, the Lamb of God, and the Lion of Judah. Father God, let someone be healed, sealed, and saved to come away from evil and not perish by the sword in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for our unsaved loved ones, Father, who are living in wicked things, Father. Father God, there's none righteous but you, Lord. No, not one. Father God, we just thank you. We lift you up. We pick up the cross and follow you and deny ourselves, Father. It's glory, glory, glory in heaven. You reign. All praises be to the King of kings, Lord of heaven and the earth. May we come out of confusion. May your children come out of fuge, confusion and evil. Because the wicked shall be judged and cut down as grass. 
Father, Lord, we just thank you. We magnify you this day now and forevermore. Let nothing come from me that's not of you. Oh, Father, Holy Spirit, guide me and lead me to all understanding. In all your ways, I acknowledge you. You shall direct my words and my path. Jesus' mighty name. Bless coming in and bless going out. In Jesus' name. This video is covered in the blood, everyone. So, yes, this is um, a topic uh, that you live by the sword, you can die by the sword. Because just as in Ecclesiastes 9.12, For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in the evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So the Lord is saying, you don't know your time. You don't know your time down here on this earth. So he's saying that you must be willing, ready, and able to accept him. Because we don't know how long we have here. You could say, well, I'll give myself to the Lord tomorrow, but you don't know how long you have. We don't know how long we have. We don't know when God is going to return. So he said, don't be like unsuspected birds caught in the net. See, so God gave me the vision of someone being snared like an unsuspected bird. See, we, we, we cannot go along in this world thinking that things can't happen when you living in evil and doing evil things. I'm going to read Romans, everyone. I'll be in Romans chapter 3. I'll also be in Jeremiah 5 on EnduringWord.com. We'll be in Jeremiah chapter 5 as well, everyone. I want you all to know that faith is daring the soul to go beyond what the eyes can see. Faith is daring the soul going beyond what the eyes can see. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not see. See, we can't, as people, keep running in wickedness because God say he, you will be cut down as the green grass. Okay? Now let's read in Romans when Paul was talking to the Gentiles, 3, Romans 3, chapter 4, God forbid ye, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So God say that, may you walk in righteousness upright in him, it's because when the judgment comes, that you'll be overcome in other wicked things. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar as it is written. Okay, but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take a vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God have more abounded through my lie into his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. See, we are born into sin, but we are saved through the grace of and the mercy of the Lord. When he died and gave up his life on that cross, he gave us his grace and mercy. But if you're walking in wickedness, he said you ought to turn away and come away from that. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. 
They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The position, the poison, I'm sorry, of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. See, God say the wicked is walking around in bitterness, not repenting, shedding innocent blood, being destructive in their ways, causing misery and strife, doing unrighteous things, having unrighteous behavior, not believing. There is no fear of God before their eyes, not fearing God in their hearts. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin. See we know that Jesus came to fulfill the law. The law was already fulfilled. Okay, so we have to live through the grace of God. It is God who saves us through his grace and his mercy. The living king who sacrificed his life for us. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ also. Unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is the Christ Jesus. See, we know that Jesus died on the cross for our redemption. He resurrected for our redemption, everybody. He is our Redeemer. All right. But Jesus give us choice. It is man who has choice to live in deceit, bitterness, and evil, or to come over into peace, the light, because Jesus is the light to our path. He is everlasting, the everlasting, the almighty God, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. You know, he is just, he is merciful, but we are to submit, we must submit to him, we must confess our wrongs to him, we must submit. We cannot keep walking in foolishness, evil, deceit, and deception, deceiving people, all right? Now also, Jeremiah was trying to stand up for the people in Jerusalem. On a during word, looking for a righteous man but finding none. Looking for someone who seeks truth. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, see now and know. And seek in her open places if you can find a man. If there is anyone who executes judgment, who seeks the truth, and I will pardon her. Though they say as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. If you can find a man who seeks the truth, and I will pardon her. Speaking through Jeremiah, God exposed the corruption of Jerusalem of Jeremiah's day. It was as if there was not even one man who did right and sought after truth. See, look at how what happened in Genesis. Remember how Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was none really found righteous, and only eight was saved, was Noah and his family, everyone. See, because we would all perish if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus. So he saves us and set us free. That's why he says we are to accept him in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our life. We are to put on a full armor. Because when we accept Jesus through the blood of Christ, we become overcomers over sin. We are no longer slaves to sin, okay, but slaves to righteousness. Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. And he, it was imputed for righteousness 
when he gave up his life for us. See, so judgment, the wicked will be judged. So don't ever think if you're someone who's wilding and, and, and running and wickedness and evil things, hurting others and doing deceitful things and being bitter and angry and loving the world instead of loving the Lord, Jesus said you are to turn from that because you don't know when is your time? If you perish tomorrow and you live in wicked and evil things, you know, Jesus has to judge your soul. Okay? So when I saw that vision of a guy being snared by that bird, that was evil. Jesus is saying he does not permit evil in man. He wants us to turn from wickedness. So if you plan it and you plotting and being deceitful and deceptive and being evil, willful sin and not repenting from this, Jesus say he judges the wicked will be cut down as grass. So we, we must turn from these things. There's no not one who was righteous. Jesus saves us through his amazing grace, the sacrificial lamb, everyone. Jeremiah's prayer, O oh Lord, are not your eyes on the truth? You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to return. O oh Lord, are not your eyes on the truth. See, Jeremiah had appealed to God who saw and cared about truth among men. See, God cares about how we're walking with him. If we're walking with him or we're walking in the world. He prayed with a sense of amazement at the hardness and stubbornness of heart among God's people. See, there is stubbornness in the heart of man. There's rebelliousness in the heart of man. But God said that we ought to turn from rebelliousness, rebelliousness and stubbornness. Because he said rebellion is worse than witchcraft. You know, it's not good to be evil or think evil. God knows we're not perfect, but we're not to be practicing evil things. We're not to be um, practicing things and blaspheming the word of God, the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit and out here um, prophesying falsely, um, false prophets. Um, we, we are to speak thus saith the Lord. Okay? Jeremiah's plan to appeal to the great men of Jerusalem. Therefore I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish. For they do not know the way of the Lord, the judgment of their God. I will go to the great men and speak to them, for they have known the way of the Lord, the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst into bonds. See, Jeremiah was trying to stand in, you know, for his, the people in Jerusalem. Because they were trying to go away from God. And he wanted to stand up because he knew the wrath, what God's wrath would come down on men, that would not be a good thing. See, that's why God always gets someone to stand in the gap for his people, to tell them to turn away from wickedness. Look how he was with Jonah. When he told Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach repentance, and the people didn't want it, um, he didn't want to do that. Jonah was afraid. But he had to go and do it. This is what um, his assignment was towards God. All right? So he always sent that person to tell people to return away from their wicked ways. Okay? The penalty. See, there's a, a penalty for rebelliousness. There's a penalty. The penalty is death. If you're not turning from wickedness and evil things, the penalty is, is death. Therefore, a lion from the forest shall slay them. A wolf of the desert shall destroy them. A leopard will watch over their cities. 
everyone who goes out from there shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many. Their backslidings have increased. How shall I pardon you for this? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by those that are not gods, when I have fed them to the full, that they committed adultery. See, committing adultery in the spirit, God does not like. He does not like adultery committed in the spirit, and he does not like adultery committed in the natural. All right? It is abomination to him. Everyone nigh, nigh after his neighbor's wife, shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord, and shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? See, Jesus saying it is punishment for spiritual adultery as well as physical, natural adultery. Therefore, a lion from the far shall slay them. Most see the lion and the wolf and the leopard, described here as pictures of the coming invaders. Yet it is also possible that Jeremiah pictured Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah desolate and given over to wild animals. The coming war of judgment will send Judah back to much more primitive times. The lion represents strength. The desert wolf ravenous and the leopard swiftness, all traits of the Babylonians. So Nebuchadnezzar is called a lion for his cruelty, a wolf for his veracity, and a leopard for his slyness and swiftness. Many towns were destroyed at the beginning of the 6th century BC and never again occupied. Others were destroyed and occupied after a long period of abandonment. When in more faithful and obedient times Israel came into the promised land, God used nature to light to fight for them. Deuteronomy 7:20 and Joshua 24:12. God sent nature to work against Israel and it for them. God promised this to a disobedient Israel in Leviticus 26, 22. I will also send wild beasts among you and shall rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in numbers. Jeremiah anticipated the fulfillment of this warning. Your children have forsaken me when I have fed them in full, to the full. Judah's son was all the worse which considered a simple ingratitude. God had done so much for them, yet spiritually speaking, they committed adultery. See, God does so much for us, everyone. And we live in, people can live in sin, they can um, live in sexual adultery, spiritually. Um, Jesus, look at these things, serving pagan gods. There's spiritual adultery going after pagan gods was also connected to sexual adultery. The so-called worship of pagan gods often involved ritual prostitutes and sexual immorality. The ideas of spiritual and sexual adultery were connected and combined. See, Jesus really, really takes sexual sin very, very seriously, everybody. When you commit in sexual sin, spiritually you commit it spiritually in the spirit and you commit it in the natural. See, it's against God. That's why he said we ought to turn away and come from wickedness because um, spiritual adultery and physical adultery, natural adultery will be judged. There was a sexual aspect to religion throughout the Fertile Crescent. Although the goddesses of fertility played a much greater role among the Canaanites than among any other ancient people, sacred prostitution was an almost invariable accompanied of the cult of the fertility goddess in Phoenicia and Syria. They performed, they preferred to call the temple prostitute a zona, a profane woman, rather than use the Canaanite term Kadesa, the holy woman. Shall I not punish them for these things? As Jeremiah searched Jerusalem, he found no righteous men or men of truth. He did find spiritual rebels and adulterers. This was the nation due for judgment. See, we have so much of sexual immorality out here. I mean, it's everywhere. It's, 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 it's just devastating. The sexual immoral things, the adultery, um, the fornicating, um, the disregard for the word of God, 
the disregard for the holiness of God. Um, Jesus will take away your lampstand, everybody. See, he is a light to our path. But if we're not um, walking um, away from these things and just wilding in these things, fornication, um, adultery, um, these are abominations, abominable against God. That's why he says we are to turn from these things. We are to be judged. If you're someone who's living in fornicating or adultery in this earth right now, and you were to perish, you know, Jesus judges your soul. See, he judges our soul. That's why he says if you live by the sword, you can die by the sword. If you're someone that's murdering, willfully murdering, bothering children, you know, things like that, doing abominable things towards Christ. Jesus said your soul can perish. You don't know how long you have here. You know, it's his wrath. You drinking the cup of his wrath. You drinking the wrath of God, the cup of his wrath, everybody. See, that's why it's good to, to, to turn from these wicked things. If, you, if you're praying... Um, and if you've been in witchcraft and doing tarot cards and tarot card reading and psychics and witches, witchcraft things against one another, God sees this. You know, these type of things you must come out of. Atheists and agnostics, I pray. To the Lord God Almighty, that you receive Christ in your hearts. People in witchcraft, rebelliousness, abominable practice, sexual immorality, I pray that you receive Christ in your hearts. Now is the time, because the wicked is going to be cut down like grass. With the world, Say it's normal and right. God say it is wrong. Sexual immorality of all kinds is wrong in God's eyes. Marriage vows between man and woman is what God permits. Anything outside of that is not is not of God. Man says. Yes, certain things, all right, God says no. So we want to go on the side of God and what God says is right. We cannot listen to what man think is right, but what God think is right. Because man does not have the will to put you in heaven or hell. God does. So he said we are to listen to him. The King of King, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father. Also, I want to say this. God gave me a specific, the Holy Spirit gave me a specific name. Um, and when I asked God um, why he was giving me the person's name, um, I heard the word share and share alike, and I heard the root of money. The love of money is the root of evil. So God also has been telling me about people making money their God. We all want money. Money is good to have, but you cannot make money your God. That's something that we sh everyone need to know. Will God give you money? You're, you are to ask God what to do with the money, who you can bless. Um, God blesses us, prosper us in better positions, better things. You can live in luxurious things and luxurious homes and still not do the will of the Father. So we must do the right things when God blesses us with our gifts. 
if God is blessing you with great things to help someone, it's not to look down on others, but it's to ask God who you can help, who you can bless. We, we cannot be hardened in our hearts because we get in a certain place in life, in a certain position. See, God is a God who shall not lie. We must be humble, humility, have love for others, not look down on others who are less, have less. And most time, a person that has less is a person who is more God-fearing. The poorest person could be the person that's the most God-fearing. A person that don't have much. But see, what do you have in your heart? See, God is looking at the wealth in your heart. How much wealth is in your heart? See, little is much when God is in it. You could be have a cardboard box. But thank you, Lord, for my cardboard box. Let's be thankful. Not be selfish. Lovers of money, defiling ourselves and our bodies. Let our thoughts be pure and holy with God. See, Jesus is light and manna. He gives us manna for our hearts, spirit, mind, bodies, and souls. Jesus also judges the false prophets, everybody. Just like um, in Jeremiah, when there were false prophets, Jesus was talking about, he judges the false prophets. See, he judges church first. He judges church first. Because Just like Holder was a false prophetess, Holder, a false prophetess, she was saying things that was coming from her, and she was leading the Israelites the wrong way. She was leading people the wrong way. So we must reverence God. We must speak what the Lord put in our spirit because we have people that can follow us and if you're speaking the wrong thing they will be led the wrong way okay so I was given a person and the spirit and the Lord was saying that they were being misled it was someone who was being misled they were being misled the wrong way so we have to be careful of who we are following, who we are listening to, because you can be led the wrong way. Okay, everyone? The Lord is just to forgive us. He is just to forgive us. I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. In contrast to the prophets of when mentioned in the previous verse, God would make Jeremiah a prophet of fire, whose words would announce the devouring judgment to come. As a true prophet, Jeremiah's words would have substance, but unpleasantly so. Behold, I will bring a nation against you far, you from afar. Jeremiah repeated the promise that God would bring a mighty army of judgment against Judah and Jerusalem, later fulfilled by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. Their quiver is like an open tomb. They will be invincible because their quivers will be filled with death-dealing arrows, always bringing more destruction. Every arrow could be depended on to slay someone. Nevertheless, in those days, says the Lord, I will not make a complete end of you, and it will be when you say, why does the Lord our God do all these things to us? Then you shall answer them, just as you have forsaken me and served fine gods in your land, 
so you shall serve aliens in a land that is not yours. See everyone, Jesus said that it's not good to be foolish. Declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding who have eyes and see not, who have ears and hear not. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea, by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it? And though it waves, its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. But this people has a defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain, both the former and the latter in the season. He reserved for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these things away, and your sins have withheld good from you. Hear this now, no foolish people. Through Jeremiah, God spoke to Judah and Jerusalem, exposing their spiritual and moral foolishness and resisting and rejecting him. See, Jeremiah was talking about them rejecting God. See, that's why it is so, so important not to reject the Lord. Okay, see, some say that they're proud to be atheists. Um, they reveling and boasting about being an atheist and being agnostics. And but the Lord say, "Come to Him, all who are weak and heavy laden, I shall give you rest." Because when you perish from this earth, your soul—you have to wonder where your soul is going to be. You want to know that your soul is going to be in good standing. We can't perish from this life being atheists and agnostics and um, being okay with um, that position in your life. All right, living unjustly and living in sin and, and, and bitterness, living filthy, filthy living is what I heard the other day, living filthy. See, God wants us to come away from the filth, come away from the filthy living. He says, come all who are weak and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Galatians 1.4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of the Father, our God? See, it is the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, who was and is to come, who gave his life up for us. See, Paul an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of the Father, our, our God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. See, we must not pervert the gospel of Christ. We must speak what the Lord says speak. We must speak the truth, not falsehood. We must not walk in falsehood. We must not lead others into falsehood. But though we are an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you that which have not preached unto you, let him be accursed. See, Jesus says judgment for those preaching false doctrine. As we said before, so say I now and again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, just as I bring you this word today about the wicked and the judgment, that's the truth of God. See, God's, God's truth is his death, resurrection, and burial. See, God says that when you don't turn from wickedness, you can perish. See, that's a true gospel. 
but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation Jesus Christ. See, Jesus give us revelation of what he has for us. It's in his word. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. See, Paul was persecuting the Christians, but God called Paul to do the works of him. It is through the blood that God revealed who he is to Paul, to go and preach the word to the Gentiles. But Paul had to deny himself, pick up the cross, and follow God. He had to go on that Damascus road, remember? God had to go on that uh, Damascus road, Ananias sent him, sent, was sent to um, pray over Paul, you know, so that the veil could come off his eyes. He had blinded him. God had blinded um, Paul so that he could see the things that he had for him to see. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them, which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. See, that's what I was just saying about he went on that Damascus road and the veil had to be taken over his eyes, off his eyes. He was blinded. See, Paul was blinded to the things of God. But God had to take him down that Damascus road so he can reveal himself to him. But other other apostles saw our nuns, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he was persecuted on us in times past, now and preached the faith, which was he destroyed. See, just as... The churches. When when Paul went to preach to the Romans, excuse me, the Gentiles, they were looking at him, saying, "Didn't he persecute the Church of God?" So the people in the beginning did not want to believe that Paul was real, that he received Christ in their heart. They was leery. But when Paul started speaking, it was so powerful. The Holy Spirit was working through him when he was preaching the words of God. The people stopped doubting. Some still doubted, but some started believing that he was truly transform through the renewing of Christ. See, Paul would have perished if God hadn't come into his life and his heart. He would have perished if God didn't forgive him from persecuting the Christians and turning him over to the Damascus road. See, sometimes you have to go down that Damascus road so God can have you do the purpose, his works in him. You have to receive God. But when he calls you, you must listen. All right? If he calls you and you run and hide, You have to answer to God for that. See, God, when God have a purpose for you, you must be ready, willing, and able to accept the call that he has for you on your life. 
See, Paul had no idea that God was going to use him to go and preach the gospel to the Gentiles, the gospel of grace and mercy. He had no idea. He was hating the people that was believing on God. Now look at this. Look how important Paul became as an apostle for God. The Apostle Paul, he came out of persecuting God's children to a person that was on fire for God. See, that's what God can do. God can bring you from that miry clay, take you down that Damascus road. First you was blind, but now you see. Blind Bartimaeus, he say, first I was blind, but now I see. So God does not want his children to stay blind, not knowing who he is. He say, because you don't want to be caught like an unsuspected bird. In your evil, being taken away, a snare, suddenly can fall down on you because you don't know how much time you have left. You don't want to live by the sword and die by the sword. So just like Paul was used, he was bought out his evil to do the will of the Father. See, what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for our good. So God sends his true prophets, true seers to speak the truth. The beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And without him, nothing was made. Everyone, he is the truth. The everlasting father, his word changes not. And he's a God that will not be mocked. So he judges the wicked. So it's better to come out of wickedness. To have a heart for the Lord. To have your heart circumcised. To be in oneness with the Lord our God and Savior, believing in his deity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, the Trinity, the triune God. It's his truth. Can't have one without the other. Can't have Jesus without the Son of God. You can't have the Son of God without the Father. You can't have the Father without the Son of God. They come together. No matter what man might want to tell you, Jesus was more than a prophet. He was more than a high priest. The Messiah who reigns, who was and is to come, the great I am. What's impossible with man is possible with the Lord thy God Almighty. If you're running in wickedness, if you're doing deceitful and evil things to each other or to God, you must come out of it and turn from it. You do not want to be caught in the evil net, in an evil snare. No man knows the time nor the hour. We must seek God while he must be found, while he may be found, everyone. So we must pray for those who are not receiving God, who have turned and hardened their hearts towards God. We must stand in the gap and pray for our unsaved loved ones. Or if you are unsaved, to come back to God, to turn back to God. If you're lukewarm, to turn back to God. He is willing and able to, ready for you. He's waiting. God is waiting to receive his children. 
to go back to your first love. All right? And remember, when God prospers you, don't forget him. Don't forget who he is. Don't forget where you come from. Bless others. Thank God. All right? Heavenly Father, I thank you for another awesome and great lesson. I thank you for using me as your vessel. Father, let me stand ye set fast, I move always and abounding, and be obedient to you, Lord, your will and your way. Father God, I ask that you forgive those who don't know you. May you accept them. May they accept you in their hearts. Father God, we know that the time is short, but may your children come back to you and come out of evil, Father. Let your will be done, thy kingdom come. Not our will, O Lord, but your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name. You all, God, is worthy to be praised. He is God. He is God. Whatever the problem is, just know that he is God. He's bigger than your situation. He's bigger than your problem. God is God. He's all-knowing. He know what you stand in the need of. Just confess and pray. Give it over to God. All right, everybody. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is Lisa. I pray that you all are in oneness with God and making God first in your life. All things will be added after that. All right, everybody. Be blessed. <laughs>